Oh, uh, welcome along, guys. Well, I've had a bit, a bit of a knob. I've just recorded a video and realised I didn't plug my mic in. <laughs> I'm on my helmet, mic. What a dick. So I'm going to have to do it all again. I've just had a big issue as well. I've just had to pull over. You missed all the excitement. I've just had to pull over because my gear lever fell off. This bolt unwound itself and it's only in, it's only hanging in by a thread. So I've got to try and drive home now, ride home now, worrying about the gear lever falling off. <laughs> so welcome along, you've missed all the excitement. So, as I've said, <laughs> this bike has just clicked over 10,000 miles now. It's th almost three years old. It's just done, ten, it's got 10,500. So this video is going to be all about the GSXR, what it's been like to live with for those 10,000 miles and one and a half years when I've owned it. Stick around, stay tuned. I'm going to break down soon. Now this bike was originally a Suzuki press bike. This was one of the first GSXRs into the country. It was then went to Performance Bikes magazine. It was their bike for about a year, just over a year. I used to work for Performance Bikes, I used to contribute a little bit for that magazine. So I ended up having this bike after about, I think it was after that first year. I looked after it, I did some mods with it, I wrote for the magazine, did a few things with it for the mag. Performance Bikes then merged with Practical Sports Bikes and Suzuki wanted the bike back. So I then decided I was going to buy this bike from Suzuki at my own money and I've had it ever since. So what's happened? So in, the, in those almost three years and 10,000 miles, what's gone wrong with the bike? What recalls have been done? Now what's, it, what's the ownership experience been like that? Been like with this machine? Well I can tell you it's been very, very good or I never would have bought it from Suzuki myself. It's been it's been faultless. Apart from the recalls and the issues caused by the recalls which have now been rectified, it's been faultless. Let's get past the tractor. We've had two weeks of absolutely terrible weather and there's a lot of grit on the roads everywhere, especially on these little back roads like this. But the reason I love these little back roads is they're all 60 limits and they're police free and they're twisty. It's clear. Ah! Once it gets to 7 grand it, it really hits. And then once it gets to 10 grand it really hits again. It's only a little bit flat below sort of 3,000 revs. Now this bike has been remapped again by CGS Racing, it's got the full titanium exhaust. What I'll do is I'll do a little walk round of it. I've actually just done the walk round, <laughs> which wasn't recorded. Now if I remember rightly, this bike's had three recalls done by Suzuki GB. The first of which was the ECU. So if you're buying one of these, you want to check these recalls have been done. So originally there were some reported problems of the quick shifter and blipper snapping chains causing issue. I'm being overtaken by a golf. What the hell? Well let him go, I've got a broken gear lever. So Suzuki ordered a recall on the ECUs and they swapped the ECUs on these for a replacement with different algorithms for the quick shifter and blipper. I this bike never experienced any of the issues which was being reported, but of course it was changed anyway. Well, let me just pull over and make sure that gear lever is still tight. I don't want to lose that bolt. Alright, it's still in. Let's give it a little... Oh, it's come looser. Let's tighten it back again. It sounds lovely. I love the sound of this. I love the sound of that full system, that full block system. I love that pop you get on the on the quick shifter. It's gorgeous. Hell yeah. The thing 
it's so agile. Yeah, the carbon wheels do help, of course. But these are agile anyway. Oh yeah, it's a great, great, great bike. Oh, and there's a lot of sheep in the middle of the road. What is going on now? I better turn off. While we wait for the sheep. Come on, sheepies, out the way. The other recalls, I think, it was, it was a recall for the fuel line. There was an issue with the fuel clip where the fuel line attaches to the fuel tank. There was a recall to replace that clip. And recently, within the last five weeks, there's been another recall which has affected this bike. Now, I had a I had a problem whereby the ABS light would stay on, it wouldn't go out. Normally on, on, on these new bikes, you turn them on, you get the traction control light, you get the ABS light. As soon as you head off and the wheels are turning and the, and the speed is being registered, those lights go out. Well on this, the light was staying on. Now, I don't know whether the ABS wasn't working, whether just the light was staying on, I don't know. But uh, it went to Hazelmere, Hazelmere Motorcycles for its servicing and they actually, I actually said to them, you know, it's got this problem with the ABS, they said, oh, we've not heard of that before. And that day, Suzuki GB issued a recall to fix that problem. And it actually meant a whole new IMU going onto, onto the bike. So these have had a replacement ECU and a replacement IMU. So basically, the whole of the electronics have been replaced on these. Has there been any issues with this bike in the time we've had it? No. No issues whatsoever, apart from the items which were covered under warranty, apart from the ABS light problem. The only other, the only small issue, which is probably due to the fact it was mapped, is when it had the BDS Racing map, we, it actually melted the cat in the headers completely melted all of the, the cat inside and restricted a lot of airflow and the bike lost a lot of power. Now I don't know if that's a, a common thing anyone else has experienced with these but I think it was just because it wasn't standard it was mapped. I've not heard of that but that was the only issue which you know the, the, the bike was non-standard so you can't really blame Suzuki for that but uh, that's the only problem we've been and the ABS light issue which has been fixed with the recall so apart from that that isn't bad for a bike which is all new in 2017 the weak point on this bike the only thing on these bikes which is a bit weak is really the front brake on the original bike on this 2017 they used to suffer from a lot of brake fade on track you don't really notice it on the road but on track and this bike is set, this bike has the 2018 updates done, which is different rotors, different calipers, there's different bigger pistons in the calipers. You, you have to give the brakes work, but you have to pull them quite hard. They've got a lot of feel, but you've just got to pull the lever quite hard compared to a lot of other brakes. That probably is because the bike does not have braided lines as standard. The 2019 one does. This one doesn't. So that is an upgrade I'm going to do to this. I'm going to put some braided lines on it. On the road it's fine, but the more track days I'm doing, I'm actually getting a bit of arm pump from, from putting the front brake. Ridiculous. braided lines to follow shortly. I think what we'll do is we'll stop again <laughs> and I'll check that gear that even still in again. Look at that torque. That is one of the things I really love about this bike, that VVT gives the engine so much torque 
it's incredible this is why these mate this is why i bought this bike because it makes a good road bike it makes an absolute stonking road bike because of that torque it's got it's got more torque than me there is my beast apologies it's a little bit Sort of windy, so it could be a bit of wind noise, and I'm right by the main road as well. There's gonna be a bit of traffic noise. There is the Brox Performance Titanium Exhaust. That made a big difference once it was mapped to the performance. Really, I'm, I think I made 204 brake horsepower on the dyno at the back wheel with the mapping and the Brox on there. Carbon wheels from Dymag, again, big improvements in performance there. Good deal of weight saving as well with those being fitted crash protection i've got evotech sliders gb racing engine cases another big update i've done on this which i haven't really mentioned actually is it's got full nitron suspension it's got a nitron rear shock top of the range module with the preload adjuster and also the nitron fork cartridges in this as well they're a little bit harsher than the standard suspension it's a little bit more racy. One thing they do with Nitron, when you buy it, you say what you want to use the bike for. So you say, I want to do track days, I want to do a mix of track days and road riding. I want to do just road riding. And then they spec the suspension for your purpose. I basically said I wanted to do a mixture of track and road. So on the road, it is a little bit firmer than standard. But on track, you've then got that support you need. And when I'm on the road, I have to normally take out, say, three turns of preload from the forks. And then when I go on track, I wind about three turns of preload in again. The standard seat on this bike is actually really comfortable. But what I have gone for is the Louis Moto cover. So this is a Louis Moto cover. This is their track version, which is a bit grippy to give you some support on track. And of course, with the custom logo. So this is the Pyramid Plastics matching rear hugger which really transforms the bike and looks absolutely fantastic. I think that is about it. That is about everything on this bike, which I've modded, I think. It's probably other stuff I can't remember. I've done so much. I've also fitted titanium bolts to it and stuff like that. But yeah, there she is. Oh, how good's that sound? Beautiful. Quick shift and blipper is very, very good on this bike. It's one of the best quick shifters, smoothest quick shifters and blippers available. It's certainly better than one on my H2. That one is okay. You, can't, you feel like you can't use it all the time. Whereas this one, any revs, anywhere. The traction control coming in there. If I had to criticise this bike, some of the bad points I don't like, it's not perfect, is the traction control is tied with your anti-wheelie. So, apart from meaning you can't just turn off anti-wheelie and do wheelies everywhere but still have your traction control on, apart from that, which I don't like, it also means if you're on track and you end up winding, you know, you're getting quicker and quicker, it's a nice hot day, you turn the trash control down, 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 so it gets less and less obtrusive. And then you get to the point where the bike is wheeling a lot. Because the less traction you have, it seems the more it lets you wheelie. So you end up having traction on like one or two, but then you have to be really careful controlling the wheelies. So I don't really understand that. Other bad points, well, it's a Suzuki, you know, some of the fixtures and fasteners can be a little bit cheaper looking than some of the other Japanese alternatives like the Kawasaki and Yamaha I think are probably better quality plastics and fasteners but what Suzuki do do very well is the actual mechanical parts of the bike they make a lovely motorcycle they make it a lovely bike to ride and just something that works very, very well. I mean, not just simply putting the bike into neutral. Something simple has been able to do that first time every time without having to fanny around trying to find neutral. You don't get that with Suzuki's. The gearboxes are always lovely. Just the way things work is really nice. 
and that is probably the, the favourite thing about Suzuki bikes. Uh, I'm trying to think of other bad points I don't like. The dashboard, it's a little bit 80s retro, let's be honest, but it's got all the information there you need. The rev counter is quick and easy to see. You've got all of the fuel gauge, all of the miles to empty, battery voltage, you've got everything. Battery voltages, outside temperature, you know, it's fully laden with information on that dash. It's just presented <laughs> in a very 80s fashion. I'm surprised it isn't wheeled out on a little trolley <laughs> and put onto the bike for you. In old school, people from the 80s who went to school in the 80s are not talking about this to wheel the TVs out on the trolley to watch programs on TV. Ah, you go back now, Jobs. You just lost, lost half your audience. <laughs> Mirrors are very good. There's no vibration in these mirrors. Like I rode the, the new S1000 double R the other day. Mirrors vibrating all over the place. Still steady mirrors. <laughs> I mean, it sounds silly. You don't buy a litre bike because of how well the mirrors perform. But it's just little things like that which make the whole ownership experience nicer. Stop again, check my gear lever. <laughs> Sorry about this. It's. Uh, you don't expect it with a professional like me, I know. Maybe I should invest in that torque wrench. <laughs> Another thing I wish they'd put on this is cruise control. I've of course got my MC Cruise cruise control system. Let me demo it for you. I love cruise control on a sports bike. It's, it's one of the few bikes which actually needs cruise control because you're leaned forward, you've got weight on your wrists. It's so nice just to be able to rest your throttle hand. Ah, so you know what I mean? You can just rest that now. Why don't all sports bikes have cruise control? I really miss it on my H2, not having cruise control. I really miss it. So let's see some cruise control on next year's model Suzuki. But apart from that, neutral, it's there every time. Apart from that, only other thing, the fuel tank is quite small. You said you've got a 16 and a half litre fuel tank. You know, a lot of the other bikes are sort of 17 and a half litres. The fuel consumption is pretty good. Since having it mapped, it definitely uses more fuel now. Without question, it's a bit thirstier. But you expect that more performance equals more fuel. You haven't got to be a rocket scientist to work that one out. If you're looking for a litre bike to use primarily as a road bike, well even for both track days and road, but if it's going to be used on the road, I highly recommend the new GSX-R. Because two main reasons, two biggies, you've got that variable valve timing, gives it a lot of mid-range. You can use it on the road without having to thrash it into the, you know, to, like when I test rode the new Blade, I found it was so flat, you had to get it and build the revs up to be able to enjoy it, and then you're just speeding everywhere. Whereas this, it's got torque. You don't have to rev it to have performance. That's one reason it makes a good road bike. The other is it's comfortable. Yes, you are leant forward a little bit. There's a bit of weight on your, on the wrists, but not a great deal. Not a great deal. Also, the foot pegs are nice and low. You've not got your feet, your feet up around your neck. Comparing that to the new S1000RR, those foot pegs are at least three inches or four inches higher than what they are on the GSX-R. And I've had this on track I've had zero issues with ground clearance on the footrests, and I've had it properly over. Uh, it's missing heated grips, it could do with heated grips, it could do with cruise control, but the basic foundations of comfort, nice torque and comfortable position, that is the most important things for me a road bike needs to have. So there we go guys, I hope you enjoyed that, I'm sorry it's probably not as good as the video it could have been because I missed <laughs> half an hour of me going through everything and it's always a bit more interesting when you try to re-go through something for the second time 
it, <laughs> it loses something, so apologies for that. You'd think after doing this vlogging thing for six or seven years, or however long I've been doing it, I would remember to plug my mic in, but apparently not always. <laughs> this is power level one, which is full power. This thing is absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. Yeah, alright. Never mind getting beat up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> 